Today we're going to talk about the difference between a molecular compound and an ionic compound. Molecular compounds are new to us, ionic compounds are not, so let's talk about this right away. Um, so I'm going to kind of draw a line right down here. We're going to split, split this ionic versus a molecular compound. As we remember from our last, um, our last uh, unit, we talked about ionic compounds. And we said if to identify an ionic compound, uh, we are looking for a compound that has a metal in it, found on the left-hand side of the periodic table. And an, and an element that has a non-metal. And sometimes we have more than one non-metals in those polyatomics that we talked about. Uh, the type of bonds that are formed here we call ionic. And those ionic bonds um, are formed usually from opposite charges. We know that we uh, those opposite charges we, we talked about last in the last unit are formed from cations. Those positive ions being attracted to anions. Those negative ions. So metals form um, cations when they lose electrons, um, and uh, nonmetals form anions when they gain electrons. Um, and these opposite charges are attracted to each other, and um, that's how we form ionic uh, bonds found in ionic compounds. And so we, we like to also say that this is, as we said just now, a transfer of electrons. And that the whole reason behind the transfer of electrons is, as we talked about before, is to try to, um, to, try to have an electron configuration um, like a noble gas. So let's talk about molecular compounds. These are a new type of compounds. So molecular compounds are formed from... Um, Two or more nonmetals, and we're going to include in this is really important because um, there is a, a very interesting um, element that does not um, is not situated with the nonmetals, and that's let's include hydrogen into this. So, so hydrogen will sometimes act like a nonmetal, and sometimes it will act like a metal. Sometimes it will lose an electron to form a positive charge. Sometimes it'll it'll uh, form a molecular compound. We'll talk more about that in a few, few minutes here. The bonding that occurs in a molecular compound is called covalent. So they form covalent bonds. And these covalent bonds are not due to a transfer of electrons, they're due to sharing electrons. And we'll talk more about the sharing of electrons here pretty quickly. Okay. Again, two or more nonmetals. There is no ions involved here. So we're not talking about positive and negative ions, we're just talking about different type of bonding. And um, for the same reason, to get that electron configuration up to um, a noble gas. So the next thing I want to talk about is Lewis dot structure and something called valence electrons. Okay, so let's start, let's start with valence electrons first. And that'll, I think that'll uh, lead us into where we want to go with forming compounds. So a valence electron is going to be, and we could look at it two different ways. Valence electron is electrons that are involved in bonding, forming those covalent bonds that we find in uh, molecular compounds. So that's number one. And number two, valence electrons are electrons in the highest energy level. In the highest energy level. And so there's two ways to determine how many valence electrons are in a compound. So let's take um, an example of nitrogen. Nitrogen. Nitrogen um, has seven electrons. There's an atomic number of seven. And if we were to write the electron configuration of nitrogen, um, we know that we start with 1s2, and then we go to 2s2, and then we go to 2p, 2p3, and then 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7, so that matches, okay? So um, what, what we're talking about is, um, with respect to the electrons that are involved in bonding, or the electrons in the highest energy level, are these electrons right here. Um, these are the highest energy level electrons, and so we would say that there are five valence electrons in nitrogen, five valence electrons, okay? Now, an easier way to, to do this, instead of just writing the electron configuration for every single atom, 
um, is we can look at the periodic table. So let's take a look at the periodic table real quick. Okay, so on our periodic table, we, we know already that uh, we, have, we have elements aligned um, in groups going down a group. And um, on top of each group, we've, we've told you that you can use uh, the group number to determine um, some information. So on group 1A, um, and then we have 2A here. We're going to ignore the transition metals for the moment. We have group 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, and then we have group 8A right here. Um, we've used this, this numbering scheme to make it useful for us um, because the group number is equal to the valence electrons um, for these uh, representative elements. And so what that means is everybody in group 1A has one valence electron or electron available for bonding. Everybody in 2A, two valence, 3A, three valence, 4A, four, four electrons, and you, and you get the picture. And so um, I could ask a question, something like, how many valence electrons are in carbon? Or how many valence electrons does carbon have? So we would just go up here and we would look where carbon is, and carbon is right here. And carbon is in group 4A. So we're going to say that carbon has four valence electrons. Four valence electrons. Okay, so it's as easy as that. Now, we do have this, we do have this way to show um, number of valence electrons. And so let's talk about that way to show the number of valence electrons. Okay, and so we, we call this Lewis dot structures. And so here's, here's what we do for a Lewis dot structure. We have a little bit of rules for it, no big deal. Um, let's say we ask you to draw the Lewis dot structure of, let's say, um, barium, Ba, okay? And so what, what we, we say when we're talking about dots is the dots are going to represent the valence electrons. Oops, I spelled that wrong. Let me fix that real quick. Okay, so uh, first off, we have to determine how many valence electrons barium has. So we're going to go up here. Let's again do our periodic table. We're going to go ahead and find barium. And uh, we have barium right here. It has 56 electrons, but not all of those are valence. Barium is in column 2A, so it's going to have two valence electrons. Okay, so it's going to have two. And the way we draw these valence electrons is, is we draw them as dots. And so we're going to place them around barium. And here's the way I like to place them. I'm going to put the first dot, we'll call it 12 o'clock right there. I'm going to put my second dot, we'll call it 3 o'clock right there. So now I made two dots, and, and we're done. That's, that's the number of valence electrons. And this would be the Lewis dot structure for barium with two valence electrons. Okay, let's take a look at a different one. Let's say we're going to do the number of uh, valence electrons in argon. In argon. And so I'm going to go up here and look for argon, see how many valence electrons argon has. And argon's right over here in the noble gas category. It has eight, 18 total electrons, 18 total electrons, but it is in column 8A, so it only has eight valence electrons. And so let's go ahead and draw our valence electrons. Again, we'll start with a dot up here at the top. One. We'll go at 3 o'clock, there's two. Uh, six o'clock, there's three. Uh, we're going to go over to 9 o'clock, there's 4. And now we're going to double the dots up. We'll go 5, 6, 7, 8. And there, that would be um, the Lewis dot structure for argon or noble gas. Okay? Now, that brings us to a really important point now. Okay, that brings us to the rule called the octet rule. And what the octet rule is, well, hopefully you can, you can recognize this, this oct, meaning 8. The octet rule is that atoms rule of thumb will bond so that they have eight pick that an eight that's a sloppy eight let's let's fix that they will have eight valence electrons okay that's what they're that's what the the attempt is to get to eight valence electrons now in ionic compounds we talked about how um, let me move this up a little bit here we talked about how um, atoms will lose or gain electrons in order to get to eight valence electrons um, or, or a, a, an electron configuration like a noble gas. Um, 
But we're, we're going to talk about a different type of bonding. And the type of bonding we're going to talk about with respect to the octet rule is the type of bonding called covalent bonding. And we did say before, a covalent bond is going to be the sharing of electrons. The sharing of electrons. Not the transfer of electrons to form an ion. 